Shalom. I'm John Carney Roth. I'm Anthony Hill. And welcome to Through the Eyes of an Elder discussion series. We thank you for joining us here today. And today, this video will probably be the most important video you will ever see in your life. And as we go through this, you're going to understand why as we get to the end. So we just appreciate you coming to join us here today. Please bear with us. we got some scriptures to go through, but we're going to make a legal case for on discussing on which evening did the Messiah renew the blood covenant that's in his blood. It's a blood threshold covenant. So I want to start off by asking some questions. And please take the time to ponder them and consider what these implications are of these questions that are going to be given right now. So the first one I want to ask is, if you eat the Passover meal on the evening of the 15th of Nisan, just exactly what does that symbolize? Have you really given it any weight of thought whatsoever? Second question I want you to ponder, is it a Passover meal or could it possibly be something else? Third point, on which night did Yahshua say, this is the new covenant in my blood? Was it on the 14th before he suffered, or was it on the 15th, the evening after he suffered? If we drink, number four, if we drink the blood wine on the night of the 15th after he suffered, just what covenant is that? I, please, I'm asking you to be honest. And ask yourself these questions and see if you can prove this through Scripture one way or the other. Fifth question, if he proclaimed drinking it before he suffered, do we have a legal right to um, change it to the time after he suffered? This is very important. Number six, if we do have the right to change it, by what authority does that come from? Number seven. Where in any of the scriptures does it say that after they placed Yahshua in the grave, that the disciples went back home and ate the Passover? Number eight, if he ate the meal on the night of the 15th, which Yahshua did not authorize, does that mean his life is not in you? This one is really, really very important. Number nine, on which night did Yahshua say that if you do not eat this bread, nor drink his blood, you have no life in you, the 14th or the 15th. And finally, number 10, where in scripture is Joshua ever identified as a loaf of leavened bread? Is this new covenant of leaven? Is this new covenant that he instituted of leavened bread and not unleavened bread? These are very important questions Anthony, that I think people in the body of Messiah, we're at a time now that they really have to ask themselves the answers to these questions. Yes. Because I think you're going to be hard pressed to find anybody that's asking these kind of questions. There are some out there that are dealing with some aspects of it, but you know, Yahweh gave me these, this revelation about two years ago when we were talking on a Sabbath evening, and all of a sudden he showed me these legalities. Mm -hmm. And you simply cannot prove these things from Scripture if you're holding to the 15th. Yeah. And so this is designed to challenge everybody out there to really decide once and for all, what exactly are you eating and drinking on whichever night you're doing? Have you even considered, even asked yourself, that question, because if you're going to be in this faith, it's important that you do it correctly. Yes. And I've said many, many times, if you don't get the Passover right, which because that's the foundation of our covenant, if you don't get that one right, all the other feast days don't mean anything mm -hmm. because they're built on the foundation of the blood. Mm -hmm. So if you don't get the blood right, then we've got a problem. Yes. Yes. And. I'll venture to say, because we don't have the calendars exactly right right now, um, I'm less concerned about which calendar you adhere to, mm -hmm. but whatever way you are counting, you should know the 14th and what is the 15th. Right. So it's which day are you choosing? Which one are you trying to go towards? Mm -hmm. Are you going towards the one that scripture says, or are you trying to go to the one that tradition says? Right. And so... Today, we're going to be addressing all of these issues in one way or another. So that's my opening. What would you like to say? 
Uh, for me, this when you talked to me about the subject and <clears throat> the question was about the Last Supper, and it took me back. It really took me back to when I first believed. And this morning, Yahweh gave me a a, a picture of my deliverance because I was truly in bondage, but I was empty and I was running out there in that world and I was seemingly happy. I was going places. I was doing the things that everybody may call fun, doing the traveling, going to eat at the various restaurants. But Yahweh gave me a verse out of the 23rd Psalm this morning said, I have prepared a table for you. Mm. In, in some of your scriptures, he sent his disciples to go prepare a table. And this table is so important to me today because I was running to eat at everybody else's table. I had a table at home. I had the, the, the certain things, the elements you could put on the table to play, but it was something missing. And so my cup, according to David, was full and running over, and there should have been no room to add nothing else into the cup. But I was taking this body, which Yahweh showed me was the cup, and showing me what I was void of. I wasn't going to find it out in that world. So he took me through a process through that prison to deliver me from that bondage. So this subject on the Passover is really near and dear to my soul because I saw my deliverance from the body of sin. And now I'm at a table and I know it's like a memorial. Every year I have to sit down and remember what he has done for me, how he delivered me and how he purchased me with his blood. And for me, it was so profound because it led me down this path that David was talking about, a path of righteousness not for my sake, but for his name's sake. And so I'm really uh, thankful for the message that he put into your heart this morning. And I want to do like we say at, at the table. I want to sit back and take in all the elements of this real, of the original Pesach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, you said something in there that gave me pause for thought. And that is when we do sit down to take of the meal. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, and I, I say this for myself, do I really go back far enough to the beginning where I was delivered mm -hmm. and really give thanks and remember that that event mm -hmm. is what brought me here? Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get caught up in um, the ceremony. Yes. And Maybe we do remember, but I wonder if we really build it strongly, intrinsically inside of us to the point that it convicts the heart that I can't go against this. Yeah. Does it root itself nice and strong inside there? Uh -huh. It's like the conviction. Can you relate? Can you identify with the bondage and the hardness that and the hard labor that was put on Israel in Egypt? And the bondage that was put on you in a different way by the same sin for nature that was holding you and you was trying to fight to get free from it, but free to do what? You know, there's a I wasn't planning on going here. I didn't even think about it. Tom, listen to what you just said lately or recently. I've dealt with some people that were in the faith mm -hmm. and they left out of the faith. And how, how do I say it? I think sometimes you can be out of the faith for so long that you forgot how good it really was when you were in the faith. Mm -hmm. Your mind gets like so distorted 
Your emotions get so distorted and twisted and made malleable into something else that that mind you're currently in can't seem to bridge the gap and go back to what it felt like when you were riding high on the earth mm -hmm. when you were in your heyday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And, uh, and, and unfortunately, this is what I see in the eyes of people when I look in their eyes who are in that state. Mm -hmm. They've gone so far away from the Messiah, they can't, they can't even taste it anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't even know why they want to go back. They know they need to go back. But the taste is gone out of the mouth a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And that's so dangerous when you get to that state of mind. Because you're so close to being totally destroyed that unless Yahweh steps in, that blood covenant isn't going to be able to bring you back. Yes, yes. But the heart is just gone somewhere else, you know? It's kind of like losing a wife to another man, and she's been with him for so many years and got it maybe better over there mm -hmm. in some kind of way, you know, or she's convinced herself <laughs> uh, is better. That you're trying to get her back, but you can't get her back, yes. you uh, know? <laughs> and she's tasted that already, and now she don't want to come back. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to belabor that too long. I just want to say, because there was something you said that triggered mm -hmm. that thought. 